In the 1960s, a Keynesian consensus reigned, but the reign would not last for very long. How the reign would fall apart centers on the idea of the Phillips curve. Data from the 1950s and 60s gave us this relationship. The data showed us what we now call the Phillips curve. The data here is actually a representation of uh, data from the 1969 economic report of the president. The dots represent the inflation and unemployment rate for their respective years. The report itself states that the chart reveals, quote, a fairly close association of more rapid price increases with lower rates of unemployment. As the graph shows, the unemployment rate goes down as the inflation rate is higher. So many concluded that they were simply following the facts and the data in expressing the idea that expansionary monetary policy, which led to inflation, could reduce the unemployment rate in a predictable and long run fashion. This is almost as though the Keynesian consensus was ignoring the self-correcting shifts of the short run aggregate supply curve i.e. they were denying the self-corrective mechanism that classical economists had argued the macroeconomy could achieve on its own. And something akin a little bit closer to what the monetarists were saying, that the economy, if just we had stable expectations, if we just had the price system allowed to do, it, do its own thing, that people would adjust, that the prices would adjust the economy and we would get the ship righted, we would head it in the right direction. In addition, the Keynesians did not have to deal with any correction on the aggregate demand side as they were saying, let's be activist with our monetary policy. So we're controlling the aggregate demand curve. It's not going to correct itself anyway. So if the short run aggregate supply curve isn't adjusting, then the economy would look like a permanent trade-off between the two key variables, inflation and employment. And the economy could be manipulated and adjusted by moving the aggregate demand curve around with monetary policy. Moving aggregate demand with monetary policy was the tool and the result was a trade-off between inflation and in unemployment. If aggregate demand is low, if we move aggregate demand back, what do you have? Well, you have low inflation, but high unemployment. So in this graph here, we can see that when we move from the original kind of uh, equilibrium point on the long run aggregate supply curve and we move aggregate demand lower, what ends up happening is we get to this lower price level, price level at 95 and the lower output equilibrium, which is going to uh, represent kind of high unemployment here. So we have low inflation, but we have high unemployment. Right? If we're producing a lower amount of output, that must mean that we have a higher amount of unemployment. So at this point right here, what do we have? We just dropped aggregate demand back to here. So we've dropped aggregate demand back. We have this lower aggregate demand. And so from that, what we can see is that we get low inflation, but high unemployment. The opposite is also true. If we move up from our original price level of 100, and we shift aggregate demand out and aggregate demand is now high. Now what we see is we see a higher price level. So we've had some inflation here. So we have high inflation. We've moved from a price level of 100 up to 105, but our output is also high. The only way we get high output is if we have low unemployment. So if aggregate demand is pushed out, what do we have? We have high inflation, but low unemployment. So basically, this is what we see when we manipulate the aggregate demand curve. When you change the aggregate demand curve, you just move along the Phillips curve. Right? So high aggregate demand leads to high inflation and low unemployment. If we're at our equilibrium, our full employment level of aggregate demand, then we have average inflation and average unemployment. And if we're at a low aggregate demand, what we end up with is low inflation and high unemployment. As you move aggregate demand back, you move down and to the right along the Phillips curve, right? So we have these corresponding relations between where we're pushing aggregate demand and where we're at on the Phillips curve. 
This is the basic relationship of the Phillips curve. This is what we had seen in the data from the 1950s and the 1960s, that it seemed to make sense that just aggregate demand was moving along the short run aggregate supply curve and giving us the relationships or the, the outcome that had this relationship uh, in the data where if we have a situation of high inflation, then what we get is we get low unemployment. And if we have low inflation, we get high unemployment. We can see that resulting from aggregate demand being moved around. And so the camper kind of conclusion, the Keynesian consensus at the time was, we can move aggregate demand around and get this trade-off along the Phillips curve. We can pick which spot do we want. Do we want to have this spot on our Phillips curve? Or do we want to have some other spot, say the purple spot down here on the Phillips curve? The Phillips curve was a menu for us to choose between the trade-offs of inflation and unemployment. And we did that by monetary policy by with moving aggregate demand out or moving it back. Up next, we'll see why this vision didn't hold. Click on the video to see the next part of this lecture series.